October 3rd. If we pray from our heart every morning, the day will be stamped by our prayer. St. Sophrony of Essex. Commemorations. The Holy Hieromartyr Dionysius, the Aeropagite, Bishop of Athens, and Priest Rusticus, and the Deacon Eleutherius, 96 AD. The Venerable John the Chosebite, Bishop of Caesarea in Palestine, 532 AD. The Venerable Dionysius of the Monastery of the Key of Caves, Professor Agathangelis, Metropolitan of Yaroslavl, 1928. St. Jerome of Aegina, 1966. Uncovering of the Relics, 1988, of St. Joseph, Elder of Optina Monastery, 1911. Hyrum Martyrs Dionysius, Bishop of Alexandria, and the Deacons Gaius and Faustus. St. Demaris of Athens, martyrs Theoctistus, Theogenes, and Theotechnus. He walled the white, and he walled the black. St. Leodegarius, ledger of Autum. 24 patron saints of Korea. Uncovering of the relics of St. Joseph the Elder of Optina Monastery. The Holy Hiram Martyr Dionysius the Aeropagite, Bishop of Athens, the priest Rusticus, and the deacon Eleutherius, AD 96. Dionysius is numbered among the 70 lesser apostles. This wonderful man was the scion of a distinguished pagan family in Athens. Having completed the school of philosophy in Athens, he went to Egypt to study further. While he was there, the Lord Christ died on the cross. The sun was darkened, and there was darkness in Egypt for three hours. Then Dionysius cried out, Either God the creator of the world is suffering, or this world is coming to an end. Returning to Athens, he married a woman named Damaris and had sons by her. He became a member of the highest court among the Greeks, the Areopagus, and thereafter he was known as the Areopagite. When Apostle Paul preached the gospel in Athens, Dionysius was baptized with his entire household. Paul consecrated him Bishop of Athens. He left his wife, children, and his position for the love of Christ. He traveled with Paul for a long time and met all the other apostles of Christ. He traveled to Jerusalem, especially to see the most holy Theotokos, and describe his encounter with her in one of his written works. He was present at the burial of the holy and most pure one. When his teacher, St. Paul, suffered a martyrdom, Dionysius also desired such a death for himself and went to Gaul, and with his presbyters, Rusticus and the deacon Eleutherius, he preached the gospel among the barbarians. He suffered much, but also succeeded much. By his labors, many pagans were converted to the Christian faith. Dionysius built a small church in Paris where he celebrated the divine services. When he was 90 years old, he, Rusticus, and Eleutherius were seized and tortured for Christ then all three were beheaded. The severed head of St. Dionysius rolled a long distance to the feet of Catula, a Christian, who honorably buried it with his body. Dionysius suffered during the reign of Domitian in the year AD 96. He wrote several famous works on the divine names of God, on the celestial and ecclesiastical hierarchies, 
on mystical theology and on the most holy Theotokos. Our martyr Dionysius of Alexandria and eight martyrs with him. Dionysius was a heathen from third century Alexandria. He was educated, wealthy, and had an excellent civil career. He once had a vision and heard a voice from heaven instructing him about the Christian faith. He became a Christian and student of the scholar Origen. Dionysius was later made the Bishop of Alexandria during a time of civil unrest and persecution. The persecutions were preceded by a year of famine, plague, and civil war. When the persecutions began, Dionysius waited four days at his home to be arrested. Finally, God commanded him to leave there, and he and his companions were arrested and held in a private home. When a crowd rushed the house, the soldiers fled, and the crowds dragged the unwilling Dionysius to safety. Fearing death, many Christians made sacrifices to the pagan gods when they were called. Others were tortured until they complied. Dionysius forgave those who lapsed under torture. Still others, many of them women, were strong Christian witnesses and were torn apart, burned, or even killed by the sword. Dionysius appeared before the governor and said that he would never cease worshiping the one God. Even though Dionysius and his group were persecuted and stoned, many pagans were brought to Christianity. They were sent to a desert and endured there for 12 years, but their afflictions continued, and they all died in prison, having defended the faith to the end. Their relics were reclaimed and given a Christian burial. Dionysius of the Monastery of the Kiev Caves. Dionysius was a hieromonk and a recluse. The following incident occurred to him on the Feast of the Resurrection in A.D. 1463. With a cross and censer, Dionysius visited the caves in order to sense the relics and graves of the saints reposing there. Filled with the joy of the resurrection, as he approached the caves, he cried out, Holy fathers and brethren, Christ is risen. And a voice resounded from the graves as powerful as thunder. Indeed, he is risen. The Venerable John the Chosephite, Bishop of Caesarea in Palestine, A.D. 532. John was an Egyptian who lived the ascetic life in the Chosebo community during the reign of Emperor Justinian. Whenever he celebrated the liturgy, he perceived a heavenly radiance in the sanctuary. Ananias, an elder, labored ascetically not far from him. Wondrous was the humility of these two saints. A man brought his insane son to the elder Ananias to heal him by prayer. Ananias sent him to St. John as being greater than he. John could not help but obey the elder. However, he cried out, in the name of Jesus Christ, it is Ananias, not I, who commands you to come out of this young man. And the young man was healed immediately. St. Hezekias the Silent, the Chorobite of Mount Oreb. At first, Hezekias was negligent about his soul's salvation. But then he became gravely ill and died. However, he came back from the dead and regained health. This completely changed him. He shut himself up in a cell on the holy mountain and spoke to no one for 12 years. Before his death, the monks opened his cell and begged him to give them some instruction. He said only, he who contemplates death cannot sin. From Hezekiah descended the so-called Hezekasts, who stress silence divine contemplation and mental prayer as the chief works of the true world. There was even a hesitant skeet on the holy mountain. It is said that Saint Gregory the Theologian was a hesitant during the Lenten season. Saint Hezekiah lived in the 6th century. A hymn of praise, the holy hieromartyr Dionysius the Areopagite. Glorious Saint Dionysius, 
wondrous theologian and lucid scribe. His mind, gathered in his heart, he directed to God. He witnessed heavenly mysteries and revealed them to us. He perceived the glory of the heavenly orders and described the hierarchy of heaven. Principalities, dominions, virtues, powers, wondrous thrones, seraphim, cherubim, and archangels. Golden-winged angels of God and the mother of God and beheld all with fear and also that which shines above the dust of the earth, heavenly powers of infinite strength, immortal suns and stars most brilliant. All that he witnessed, Dionysius made clear and told to the church. Thus he adorned and enriched the church, and his accomplishments were made golden by his bloody death for his Christ. Now he shines in heaven, and the angelic hosts, blazing with the glory of God, call Dionysius brother. Reflection A vision of St. Andrew, fooled for Christ. Walking one day along the streets of Constantinople, St. Andrew saw a large, splendid procession. A rich man had just died, and his funeral procession was majestic. However, when Andrew looked more closely, he saw many black figures capering around the corpse with joy, some laughing like prostitutes, others barking like dogs, others grunting like swine, and others pouring a foul liquid over the body of the deceased. They all mocked the processional chanters, saying, You are chanting over a dog! Astonished, Andrew wondered what this man had done in his life. Glancing around, he saw a handsome youth standing by a wall and weeping. For the sake of the God of heaven and earth, tell me the reason for your weeping, he said. And the youth replied that he was the guardian angel of the deceased. The dead man had grievously offended God by his sins and had rejected the counsels of his angel. He had completely given himself over to the black devils. The angel said that that man had been a great and unrepentant sinner. He had been a liar, a despiser of men, a miser, a perjurer, and a libertine, who had defiled 300 souls by his debauchery. He had been honored by the emperor and respected by men, but all in vain. The great funeral retinue was also in vain. Death had caught up with the rich man in his unrepentant state, and the harvest had come to him suddenly. Almighty God, our help and refuge, fountain of wisdom and tower of strength, who knowest that I can do nothing without thy guidance and help, assist me, I pray thee, and grant me divine wisdom and power that I may accomplish this task and whatever I may undertake to do faithfully and diligently according to thy will so that it may be profitable to myself and others and may be to the glory of thy holy name. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. O Lord our God, who has honored man with thine image divine, and who givest wisdom to those who ask, do thou thyself now look down upon me, thy servant, and enlighten my mind, and establish my heart to receive instruction, to be diligent in study, and to achieve good success with the aid of thy divine grace. Grant that I may employ my learning unto every good work, and follow thy holy and perfect will favorably unto thy good pleasure. Illumine our hearts, O Master, who loves mankind with the pure light of your divine knowledge. Open the eyes of our mind to the understanding of thy gospel teachings. For thou art our God, and to thee do we offer up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever. Chronicles, chapter 32. 
Assyria invades Judah. After these things and this faithfulness, Sennacherib king of Assyria came to Judah and encamped against the, the fortified cities, thinking to capture them. When Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib came and that his purpose was to make war against Jerusalem, he consulted with his leaders and commanders to stop the water from the springs outside the city, and they helped him. And he gathered many people, and they stopped the waters of the springs in the river that ran through the city, saying, Let not the king of Assyria come and find a lot of water and prevail. And Hezekiah strengthened himself, and built up all the wall that was broken, raised it up to the towers, and built another wall outside. He also repaired the fortress of the city of David and made many weapons. Then he set military captains over the people, gathered them to him in the open square of the valley gate, and encouraged them, saying, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid of the king of Assyria, nor before all the nation with him, for there are more with us than with him. With him are arms of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God, to save us and to fight our battles strengthened by the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Sennacherib, king of Assyria, sent his servants to Jerusalem, while he and all the forces with him laid siege against Lashish, to Hezekiah, king of Judah, and to all Judah who were in Jerusalem, saying, Thus says Sennacherib, king of Assyria, And what do you trust, that you continue under siege in Jerusalem? Does not Hezekiah deceive you to give yourselves over to die by famine and by thirst, saying, The Lord our God will deliver us from the hand of the king of Syria? Did not the same Hezekiah take away the altars and the high places and command Judah and Jerusalem, saying, You shall worship before one altar and burn incense on it? Do you not know what my fathers and I did to all the peoples of other lands? Were the gods of the nations of those lands able to deliver their lands from my hand? Who among all the gods of those nations my fathers utterly destroyed could deliver his people from my hand, that your God will be able to deliver them from my hand? Now, therefore, do not let Hezekiah deceive you or persuade you like this. Do not believe him, for no god of any nation or kingdom was ever able to deliver his people from my hand or the hand of my fathers. How much less will your God deliver you from my hand? Furthermore, Sennacherib's servants spoke against the Lord God and his servant Hezekiah. He also wrote a letter to revile the Lord God of Israel and spoke against him, saying, As the gods of the nations of the other lands did not deliver their people from my hand, so the God of Hezekiah will not deliver his people from my hand. And they called out with a loud voice in Hebrew to the people of Jerusalem on the wall to frighten them and trouble them so that they might take the city. And they spoke against the God of Jerusalem, as against the gods of the people of the earth, the work of men's hands. Assyria's defeat. The king Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed about this and cried out to heaven. And the Lord sent an angel who cut down every mighty man of valor and leader and captain in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned shamefaced to his land. And he went into the temple of his God, where some of his own offspring struck him down with the sword. Thus the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all others. He gave them rest on every side. And many brought gifts to the Lord in Jerusalem, and presents to Hezekiah, king of Judah. So afterwards he was exalted in the sight of all nations. Hezekiah humbled and honored at his death. In those days Hezekiah was sick and near death, and he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord heard him and gave him a sign. But Hezekiah did not repay the favor shown him, but exalted his own heart, and his anger came upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. Hezekiah was humbled because of his exalted heart, he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, but the wrath of the Lord did not come upon them in the day. Hezekiah had very great riches and honor, and he made himself treasuries for silver, for gold, for precious stones, for spices, for shields, and for all kinds of desirable items, and cities for the harvest of grain, olive oil, and wine, and stalls for all kinds of livestock, and folds for flocks. And he built cities for himself, and he possessed
possessed flocks and herds in abundance, for God had given him a great deal of property. This same Hezekiah also stopped the water outlet of the upper Gihon and brought the water by a tunnel to the west side of the city of David. Hezekiah prospered in all his works. However, regarding the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon, whom Babylon sent to him to inquire about the wonder done in the land, God withdrew from Hezekiah in order to test him and know what was in his heart. Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his mercy, indeed they are written in the prophecy of Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, and in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. So Hezekiah rested with his fathers, and they buried him in the upper tombs of the sons of David. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem honored him at his death, Then Manasseh, his son, reigned in his place. Hezekiah's sickness, the sign he was given, his subsequent sin, and his repentance, all discussed at length in 4th Kings chapter 20 and Isaiah chapter 38 verses 1 and chapter 39 verses 8. Contemplate on the miraculous deliverance of Jerusalem from the Assyrians and how Sennacherib and his mighty army surrounded the walls of Jerusalem and mocked the God of Israel. How Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah fervently prayed to God for deliverance. And then contemplate on how an angel slew 185,000 Assyrians by night. How Sennacherib was slain by his own sons. And how Jerusalem was saved. given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Mercy precludes human judgment. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, are descriptions of how an honest and generous merchant would measure bulk goods. Flour, pressed down for example, would yield a more generous amount than flour fluffed up. The blessings of God intends to put in our hearts are more generous than we can possibly contain, yet this also depends on the spirit in which we ourselves give and forgive. And he spoke a parable to them. Can, a blind, can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into the ditch? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. Christ does not judge anyone. See John chapter 8 verse 15 John chapter 12 verse 47. Therefore, if the teacher does not judge, neither must the disciple, for the disciple is guilty of worse sins than those for which he judges others. St. Cyril of Alexandria. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do, but do not perceive the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove the speck that is in your eye, when you yourself do not see the plank that is in your own eye? Hypocrite! First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. Beware of hypocrisy. For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. 
for out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built the house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Hearing the gospel alone is not enough. For salvation is based not on hearing alone, nor on faith alone, but also on doing the things spoken by Christ. See James chapter 2, verse 24. The book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 16 through 34. The church in Athens. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. Therefore he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshippers, and in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. In free-thinking Athens, Paul moves beyond the synagogue and makes open contact with Gentiles in the marketplace. Then certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him, and some said, What does this babbler want to say? Others said, He seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. Both the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers believed that fulfillment could be achieved in this life through emotional calm and impassivity. However, they pursued this aim differently. The Epicureans pursued pleasure while the Stoics renounced it. And they took him and brought him to the, to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine is of which you speak? For you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Therefore, we want to know what these things mean. For all the Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or hear anything. Then Paul stood in the midst of the aerial box and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, him I proclaim to you, God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell in, on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord, in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of, of this to all by raising him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, while others said, We will hear you again on this matter. So Paul departed from among them. However, some men joined him and believed among them Dionysius, the Aeropagite, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. 
Paul consistently preaches Christ from a starting point familiar to his hearers. To the Jews, he preaches from the Old Testament. To these Gentiles, he uses one of their own altars to proclaim Christ and emphasizes. Number one, God is creator of all. Number two, God is the giver of life. Number three, God desires all people to seek him. Number four, repentance is a way toward God. Number five, God is judge of all. And six, God raised Jesus from the dead. A homily on fear and joy in God. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice in him with trembling. Psalm 2, verse 11. The prophet of God speaks these words to earthly kings and judges, for they are inclined to pride and mischievousness, born out of the power and riches that are given to them. O oh, you kings and judges, clods of dust beneath the feet of God, do not forget that you are only the servants of God, hirelings from today until tomorrow. Of what does a hireling think, digging in the field all day, about the pay that he will receive in the evening? Of what is the hireling proud, not of his labor, but rather his pay? And what does the hireling rejoice in his labor, his sweat, or his pay? Naturally, in his pay. O kings and judges, your service in the field of this life is the labor of a hireling. Therefore, with fear serve your Lord, who hired you. For you know not how your Lord will evaluate your labor in the end, or what pay he will render unto you. Serve with great humility, saying to yourself, We are unprofitable servants. Luke 17.10 Whether you will receive a reward or punishment when you go down into the grave and come before the king and judge is uncertain. Therefore, fear must fill all the days of your service. Rejoice in him with trembling. Rejoice with a pure and holy joy, as the angels rejoice in the living and unapproachable God. The joy of paradise is fragrant with purity and sanctity, but the malicious joy of Hades is accompanied by rebellious laughter. Therefore, the joy of paradise is eternal, while the laughter of Hades is turned to rage and groans. Serve with fear, for the Lord is just. Rejoice with trembling. For the Lord is exalted and holy. O Lord our God, just and exalted, awesome and holy, all of our life on earth is service to Thee and joy in Thee. If we do not serve Thee, we serve our own destruction. And if we do not rejoice in Thee, we rejoice in our own evil works. We worship Thee and pray Thee to help us, that our service be directed by fear of Thee, and that our joy be purified by our trembling before Thee. To Thee be glory and praise forever.